So our next speaker you're very familiar with, uh, he's got an interesting topic for everybody here because I didn't really realize something until we were literally just talking backstage is that, you know, he owns a multi-million dollar e-commerce business. He's also running amazing.com. He also <laughs> runs uh, Zoof, our software business. And he does all of this. He also has a very full family. And, you know, with his e-commerce business, a lot of times people are like, oh, I don't have time. Or, you know, you got a job or you got other commitments and stuff. You know, when he first built his e-commerce business from nothing to replacing a six-figure income, he had to do that all on nights and weekends. He had a corporate job, you know, a lot of commitments, still had his family. Uh, so he had a lot going on there. And so he did that for about a year, nights and weekends, was able to quit his job, focus on his business full time. But it was really only about six months until he started doing stuff with us at Amazing, started helping out in the community, uh, coaching inside of Amazing Selling Machine, and then ended up kind of working with us, becoming my business partner and all that sort of stuff. So out of all the time he's been building his e-commerce business, he's only really ever been able to be full time on it for like six months. The rest of the time, it's always been part time. And today, he really only works on it about 30 minutes a day, but is able to keep that seven figure business going, which is absolutely incredible. So please stand up, stand up. Let's give him a huge, huge hand. Welcome Mike McClary. Thanks guys. Wow. Again, I just got a little stressed hearing about that half on my plate. Um, so, full disclosure, I've changed this presentation around about a dozen times. True stories, uh, every day this week, when I talk to Matt and Devin, other folks at Amazing, uh, and we're in a meeting, I always have to end it short, because I keep saying, I gotta work on my presentation. I gotta get this presentation done. And I was saying it all the way until tonight, and I think Matt thought I was joking. Uh, but I finally finished what I have here today at two in the morning, because I kept going back and forth about how do I wanna present what I'm gonna share today? Because usually, for those of you who have been following me and watching some of my, my training videos, I like to get very tactical, very detailed. I wanna pull up screenshots, show you exactly how to get to the menu, where to go here, what to put in each field, because so often, that's what's missing. You can watch YouTube videos, hear from people, but if you don't know exactly where to go and do everything, you can get lost very quickly. So that's what I normally do. Today is gonna be a little bit different. Um, I do wanna share, like how Matt was just talking about, how do I run all of my businesses and still stay sane? Um, it's hard sometimes, it really is. And so I finally came up with the name of this called the three platform hustle, uh, because I am actively selling on those three and a couple other ones as well. Uh, I did have some alternate titles to this, this one, and if you talk to the AV crew, I forgot to change this. The title of the PowerPoint slide deck is this. The horrors and atrocities of being a solopreneur and how you can be one too. <laughs> I realized that wasn't going to incentivize or motivate very many people. Um, so I kept this one and, oh, whoa, I guess I left this slide in. Um, so those are my titles when I'm like the corporate Mike guy, CEO, president, kind of father. Uh, this guy's called Handlebar Mike. He comes out every once in a while when the beard gets a little long. I just kind of like shave everything except those long handlebars. He does a few videos here and there. My kids go crazy in not a good way when they see me on public doing this. Like, why are you doing that? People know that's you. But his title to this would have been the Ecom Three Way which sounded a lot better before I knew my wife and kids were gonna be in the front row up here watching this. But still, um, that's kinda of like what this is all about. How do you make the most of what you got in this business? So here's how I spend my days. Uh, uh, I do sell on Amazon as a third party seller. A lot of you guys probably already know my products out there. I'm also a vendor, not a lot of people know that. I still sell on the, uh, the vendor platform. We get purchase orders all the time, still selling a different brand of products as well. Been doing that now for eight and a half, nine years. And I sell on Shopify, sell on Walmart. I actually do a little bit on eBay, kind of drives me crazy, but I figured other people are selling our products on there, so I'd rather have it be me. Uh, so we still do a little bit on there as well. Uh, meanwhile, I'm the CEO of Amazing.com and president of Zoop, like Matt talked about. Uh, but more importantly, uh, I, I'm a dad, and this is my family right there. Those are the second, third, and fourth most important people in my life. I don't tell them which one is which. Keep them guessing. The only question I do get, though, is if they're second, third, and fourth, who's number one? That's that one right there. That's Penny. 
She's the love of my life. I'm sorry, Tony, wherever you're at. This little girl stole my heart. She goes to work with me every single morning. Uh, she gets excited at five in the morning. I get up super early. Something started changing like last year. For some reason, I get up now early and I, I'm excited. Believe it or not, I know I'm weird in so many ways, but I'm excited to get up. Uh, and so she is the one that goes to work with me. Now, during all of my work on my own brands, I do have some help. This is Sherry and Emily, their mother, daughter, uh, Sherry went to high school with me. I have known her now for like, oh, how, I guess I can tell you, 35 years. Wow, that's a long, long time. That gives you an idea with the age. Uh, Emily's on the right. She works two hours a day just handling customer service emails. That's it. Uh, and then Sherry kind of handles my inventory issues uh, just for about three hours a week for me. Uh, and so I don't have a lot of work. You add that up, that's like a one-third of a person helping me in my business. Uh, so everything else I like to like set on Isle of and run by myself. However, uh, I can feel like this a lot. Like that's definitely how I feel sometimes. Uh, but <clears throat> I can tell you that most of the time I truly feel like this. I absolutely positively love what I do. Like this, you, I hope you can tell on everything that I do every time I'm talking to people, I love going to work every morning in my office in the basement, Penny coming with me, hopping up and staring out the window, and just helping people as much as I possibly can in order to build their businesses, and still running my own. I, I get jazzed out of like figuring new things out, testing them out in my business, seeing if they work, testing out with our members here and the tribes like that, uh, and that's how I feel most of the time. So don't feel guilty for me, I love what I do. But there is a disclaimer that I gotta kinda make on here is that I'm not a $75 million seller, I'm not. And there are so many times that I feel like an imposter being up here because I'm with some really kick-ass sellers, some huge businesses. Uh, there's like Aaron, 75 million a year. Matt's done like, you know, over 280 million all time. And here I am working with them and they're asking me questions on how to do things. And sometimes it's kind of hard to wrap my mind around it because I only do a couple million a year with my businesses. Um, and then I realize like, I have to like put it on the perspective. And actually, Adam Ackerman, talked to him, a good friend of mine, uh, last night had dinner, was explaining like this feeling of how I sometimes feel like I just, am I, should I be doing all this right now? And should I be focusing on my business? Should I try to get a hundred million dollar business? He's like, dude, be happy. Like you love doing all these other things. How many people would love to have just another business on the side that generates a couple million dollars a year? Don't feel guilty about that. And so I really did feel like that message hit home. And so that's when I decided to change the entire presentation around and kind of like share like, you know what? I don't have to be a $100 million seller to help people and change their lives and love and do what I do all the time. I'm okay doing that. And so that's when I came up with, yeah, thank you, thank you. So if there's anything that I think I can share with you then is how to be a successful solopreneur, solopreneur, uh, and enjoy life along the way, because I truly enjoy what I do. Uh, I'm hoping to share with you a strategy that I'm using right now, every single day, in order to keep the business running successfully. So I'm gonna call this the three platform hustle. Uh, it involves these different areas, the right product, the platforms, the three of them, uh, the right pages, and also the right launch process as well. Now again, I can't go into a ton of detail because there's just not enough time to teach you how to do everything on all three platforms, but you already got a lot of it. So Matt's presentation yesterday on how to find that maximum leverage point is amazing. Knowing what he, taking advantage of everything he trained just in that 30 minute time period can help you change your business. Finding the right things about how to get the right product, the right angles, the right traffic, the right landing pages, that right there can be a game changer business for anyone wanting to sell on their own website with a direct consumer product. So I'm not gonna go into all those details, but I am gonna highlight what I focus on as well. They're similar, but I wanna share them in a slightly different way. The most important thing, and we see this every single day at Amazing, most important thing is your product. If you have the wrong product, everything else you do is gonna be incredibly hard and you're gonna go crazy and frustrated. And I believe that you know, life is very experiential. If you fail at a product, then you think this business doesn't work. It's a scam. No one can be successful at this if you fail. That's your experience. If you have a really easy time with your very first product, it can be just as bad. You think this is so easy. How can anyone not do this business? But what we found over and over again is the people that have been successful, they just hit it with the right product. That was the first thing they did right. They have a lot of other things going on as well. You can't just get lucky and build a million dollar business without doing the right things. But the first thing they all have in common, every single one, is the right product. So what you need to look, about, or look for is not formulas. 
and I know that I've been preaching this for like seven or eight years, here's the formula. What's the BSR? What's the uh, number of reviews? Where's the number of competitors trying to rank up on the first page with you? And it feels a little weird to say, forget about formulas, because eventually I have someone like this telling you this, you know, you can't just tell people ignore formulas, and then the cat's gonna say, can I just tell them to ignore you? Because that's how I feel sometimes, you know. But you will hear this, if, if, and what I'm gonna tell you today is gonna be a little, I don't know, not say confrontational, controversial, but this is how I now look at this business after 10 years into it. I'm no longer strictly looking at formulas. So maybe you don't need to forget about them completely, but you need to not focus just on whatever criteria. If you're selling just on Amazon, and you want to just sell on Amazon for the rest of your life, you can probably come up with a good formula, follow one of ours, and have a good chance of being successful on there. But if you want to build a real brand across multiple platforms, throw the formulas out the window and just focus on a couple things about your product. First, got to differentiate it. That's actually a product that we sold up there. It's actually a product that got taken down for an IP violation <laughs> because we didn't realize it. You know, you trust the China supplier, you think that they got things right and they don't. So we sold some of those for a while and uh, it was doing great because it was easy to differentiate it from the competition. Now, if you look at the massage category out there, there's a million that all look exactly the same. But we were able to focus on what was different about our product than everything else. You know, with the LED screen, uh, the, the noise was a huge thing. You want to make quiet as possible because you don't want to like, be waking up the entire family for using this thing. Uh, adjustable speeds, also multiple massage heads. If you can differentiate your product, you're going to have such a better chance of being able to have a business that can just take off from the start. Now, in addition to that, you want something that's in high demand. Again, this is kind of different than what we talk about when you're getting started, because if you're going for a very competitive category like coffee, and you're just selling on Amazon, it's gonna be super, super hard for you. But if you wanna sell across all platforms, make sure you can get as much traffic, sales, and profits as possible, you need something that's going to be in high demand, because it makes the other part of this business getting traffic, Facebook, Google, TikTok, wherever, makes it so much easier because people are always looking for it. Uh, one way to figure out if it's high demand, if Amazon's selling it, it's pretty high demand. You know, you can tell that they're getting into this market. They're not taking it over, but they only get into the products that they know are doing really well because they have all of that data. Now you also need to have a good profit. And instead of going into like, what's a good profit number? Is it 25%, 30%? Good return on ad spend, is it 100%? Is it 150, 75? Just remember this, if you can buy a product for 1X and sell it for four times as much, there's a very good chance you're gonna get a good profit margin off that product. You may never or hardly ever sell it for four times what you pay for it, but it's gonna give you the margins you need to bundle it, to have discounts, to drive traffic and sales and reviews so that you can then afford more advertising. So this, I guess this formula that I say not to go by, but this formula 4X times your price helps you do so many other things in your business that you're going to need to do. Next, you need to also have opportunity for additional sales. This is Dr. Squatch. Uh, Matt and I got a chance to see their chief marketing guy at Prosper, and he shared a lot of stuff that we had no idea they were doing. Uh, the first thing, he talked for like 10 minutes. I had no idea who this guy was, never heard of him. Uh, and then 10 minutes in, he goes, oh yeah, and we do about $300 million a year in sales. I'm like, holy cow, lead with that. I'm gonna, lead, I'm gonna listen a lot more if you tell me you're doing $300 million a year in sales. Uh, and they shared their strategy, very open about it. It worked, it, and it's beautiful. One thing they do, is they focus on getting additional sales like through bundling. A lot of their soaps are cheap, seven bucks, eight bucks, but they make up that volume by having people buy multiple packs of their different soap products. Also, uh, they do a lot of subscription-based. They started off solely doing subscription-based products. You couldn't buy the products one by one. So they only did subscriptions. Uh, and then a side note, <laughs> I just looked at my account this morning, it's pulling this up there. I'm making like, you know, 200 bucks with revenue with people that are getting freaking batteries delivered that they don't even know about probably. There's a, there's a coupon feature called subscribe and save coupons. They just enabled it like three weeks ago. Matt and I were talking at the, the Tribe Mastermind, like, couldn't we, wouldn't it be great they had a coupon just for like people wanting to get subscribe and save? They came out with it like within days of that. Uh, and so now I have people that are like, what, 28 people every month getting AAA batteries dropped off at the front doorstep whether they know it or not. That's because they clicked the button, got a coupon on there, um, and it's just another way. If I had a real product that was subscription-based, some kind of consumable product, Amazon right now is making it really simple to build that up. I know that LifeBoost is doing this. This is the type of product that will help. You don't have to have a subscription-based product. It's just another factor that can help you be even more successful with your product. And then another way to get more sales, simply have other products. Whatever you sell, 
be prepared to sell them other products down the road. It can be in your upsell, it can be in your post-purchase process, it can be later on when you launch more products, but the days of having one single product, um, just too risky. You don't want to have one product. You want to be able to sell more for lots of reasons. Again, this is going to be able to let you get higher average order values. When you can get a $50 to $100 average order value, that gives you more advertising spend to put back into your business as well. Now, when it comes to the platforms, I think you guys are going to know exactly what I'm going to talk about here. First, there's Shopify. Um, we didn't talk a lot about this at Amazing in the past, you know, eight, nine years. Uh, we just started talking about it a lot because we've seen that some of the biggest exits in all of e-commerce were for businesses that were direct-to-consumer, DTC, building their own website. Uh, Matt, Charles's businesses is that way. Looked into seeing like what's working there, started sharing that. It started working for people. And so now we recommend that everyone starts off selling on Shopify. You can sell other places as well, which I'll be talking about, but this is a great place to start. Easy to set up. Uh, there's no marketplace fees. You just pretty much pay for the transaction like you would on any credit card purchase. Uh, they have a lot more fulfillment options than before. The days of having to ship it yourself or using Amazon FBA are over. Uh, they have built-in fulfillment. Also, if you ever ask the question, like, who can I use for fulfillment for our own products instead of Amazon? Uh, deliverer. Uh, deliverer. There's two R's at the end. That's the company that we recommend for everyone because uh, they just, they're, they're dead solid and they do a really good job. Next is uh, Amazon. And of course, almost everyone here who's selling is selling on Amazon right now because let's face it, like it's the easiest place to get traffic. Uh, they have built-in FBA, still one of the very best FBA solutions out there. A lot of their uh, customers now, prime customers, can get one-day delivery. I can get same-day delivery where we're at right now on many products, so it's uh, just like they keep getting better and better. Uh, they have a well-known algorithm. I said that because anyone here who's ever tried to rank products on Amazon, you kind of know, like it changes a lot, but you pretty much know that sell a lot of products, get reviews like Tomer's talking about, and focus on the keywords you want to rank for, and you can rank. If you can beat out the person, as simple as this, if you want to rank for a keyword, just sell more using that keyword than the person right above you. And as long as you're converting well, you will move above them. That's pretty much the algorithm in a nutshell. They're also the most trusted by consumers. People still trust Amazon because, let's face it, you can return anything anytime that you want. It doesn't matter, they'll, they, they'll take anything back. It drives us crazy. I think our refund rate goes anywhere between like two and 5% at times, because people know, they're like, I'm just gonna go out there and buy it, I can return anytime in 30 days. It's annoying, but you know what? If it gets me a lot more traffic and sales, it's one of those things you just factor into your business. Then there's a new kid on the block that's been around for a long, long time. There's Walmart. They are also easy to set up. As long as you're selling already, you don't have to be selling for a long time. So I hope, no one got too scared from the panel when we mentioned that Walmart wants existing sellers. They do, but they're not looking for sellers that have been around for two, five, 10 years. They love that. That's like, you know, gonna be awesome. But as long as you've been selling for a short amount of time, apply for them. They want more sellers right now. Uh, and so it's nowhere nearly as difficult as it was. I waited seven years to get approved on there. My application was stuck somewhere in the system. Uh, and so suddenly then it happened last year and it's a great channel for me. It's like pretty much, easy free sales for me. Not that scalable yet, but Walmart plays a long, slow game, and I guarantee that they're gonna quickly ramp up and start competing even more with Amazon. We're already seeing it. Also, uh, they're lower competition. The sellers just aren't there yet, but they are in the quantities on Amazon, so it's a great place to go out there and not have to worry about 200 people selling the exact same product as you, and they are easier to optimize uh, because that's just one of those things where they tell you exactly what to do. Amazon's never done that. They'll kind of like give you all the criteria that you need, but they don't really give you a score. Like this page is optimized where you want it to be. Uh, Walmart's gonna tell you exactly what that score needs to be in order for your product to get more visibility. Awesome. Wish every other platform did that. Now, why do I want to sell on all three? Uh, again, this is one of those where a lot of people tell you, focus on one. Either focus on Amazon, we're focused on DTC, don't try to do both. I like to do all three because there's just so many reasons. One, 80% of shoppers, they comparison shop. Like they go out there, they look for a product and they're gonna look somewhere else to see what the prices are to make sure they're getting the best deal. So why not be where they're looking? They're gonna Google it, they're gonna see listings pop up on Walmart, on Shopify, on Amazon. Be where they are, which is pretty much everywhere. Also different products do do well on different, I said do do. 
Yeah, that's cool. Different products do well on different marketplaces, so you never really know. You may think that your product's gonna do great in one. I got a story like Jeremy. Uh, you guys seen him? He's running around out here. He's doing some running with the microphones. Jeremy is both a student and someone also working with us at Amazing. And he is, uh, he's always on the calls, asking all the right questions, hops on, shows us his products, asks for recommendations. This is like, he's not getting preferential treatment as part of our, our, our academy, I'll tell you guys about it. But he takes advantage of every opportunity to ask us questions. And his product has already done several thousand dollars. It's only been alive for, I don't know, you know, 35, 45 days or so. And he and I got together and I'm like, you know what, I sell on multiple platforms. I know that we have been telling you to just sell and focus on Shopify. I know that you can get sales from day one on Amazon. He did that. Got everything ready, sent his inventory, we're scared, he's like, yeah, but I don't want to focus over here. Sent him in the Amazon, as soon as he went live, he started getting sales. I talked to him right before I came up here. He's actually thinking that like Amazon may surpass a Shopify sales. And had he not tried multiple platforms, he wouldn't have known that. And he was missing out on profits. Profits are gonna drive his business for more ads, more inventory, and he's gonna be able to plat you know, grow that business into a multi-platform direct-to-consumer brand. All because he went out there and decided not to focus just on one. Uh, and another great thing is when you sell in multiple marketplaces, it gives people immediate brand trust. Sometimes when I see a product, like on Facebook, for example, we all seen these like, ads come up for products. My wife showed me one today, a little ear cleaner. If I can't find that product being sold under that brand name on a couple different platforms, not just their website, I want to make sure it's selling on Amazon, bare minimum, and I'd love to see it if it's on Walmart, because I know Walmart is more restrictive. So if you're on multiple platforms, it gives me immediate brand trust as a buyer. And that's why I think everyone should be on all three platforms from day one. That's the way you want to do it. Now, so if we're going to be on all three platforms, we talked about the right product. The next thing are your pages. And I think we obsess about this a little too much. Uh, look at this right here. These are on mobile. Uh, this is Shopify. This is Walmart. That is Amazon. Although we talk about how different these platforms are, when you look at this on mobile, I wouldn't really know which one is which. Unless I put that logo up showing you guys which one is which, it'd be very hard to tell where you're buying right there. I don't see Walmart plastered all over it. I don't see Amazon plastered all over it. The sites on mobile look almost exactly the same. So there's nothing really complicated about creating your product and launching it on all three platforms. As a matter of fact, the one thing you will notice that is common on all these is that the picture of that product is front and center and the biggest piece of real estate on every single one of these product listings on mobile. So that kind of tells me that, you know what? Um, products, pictures might be pretty important, especially if two thirds of all online shoppers are shopping on mobile and the pictures show up on mobile, I want to be there. Now, I was told earlier I need to start citing my sources. So this source is my Google search last night at 11.20 p.m. Um, that's my citation, that's how I found the number. It is a real number, uh, two thirds of people are actually shopping on mobile. So again, if I know that most people are shopping online, all these product pages look pretty much the same on all three platforms, and the pictures are the one things that stand out the most, that tells me the next thing I need to do to be successful is invest in your product photos. We haven't talked about this much during this event, but if there's one single thing that I think every seller, new and existing alike should do, is get great product photos. It is the biggest converting factor that will increase your sales out of everything you can do. If you have bad pictures, it doesn't matter what your product is gonna do for someone, they're gonna pass it right back up. If you have good pictures, it's going to help get all the clicks and all the sales. Now, the other thing I always think about is like, other than the pictures, you can change anything at any point in time. You can change the price, you can change the bullet points, you can change the description, uh, you can change, I don't know, the title, all kinds of stuff on there. Pictures though, it's the biggest pain point that you have. So from the very start, invest in your product photos. One piece of advice I can give you when you're launching or just even trying to improve a new product, get some better pictures. Lots of options here. One would be the photo studio. Uh, there are still a lot of great photo studios out there that do this for everyone. We use productphotography.com, we use them like 10 years. They're great, I mean, they, they own the domain of productphotography.com, like brilliant, I guess. Uh, they do a great job. There's a dozen other in Austin alone who do product photography. There's photo studios all over the place. Just a good option. Uh, one of our favorites though ever is digital renderings. So even though Amazon will tell you that you shouldn't use digital renderings, we've consistently seen that products that have digital renderings have better sales. 
It's because the pictures just look beautiful. You want to make them look real. You don't want to do anything fancy and have like, you know, lightning shoot out of a can of drink or something like that. But using digital renderings give you so much more flexibility in controlling every aspect about your product photos. So if you can afford it, they're not cheap, usually two or three hundred dollars for an image. Try to get some digital renderings for your pictures as well. Um, you can't do well without infographics. Like every product out there that I've seen that's doing well does something to really break their product down compared against their competition with infographics like this. Uh, this is just a really cool looking picture of a flashlight. Because they did a digital rendering, they're able to do this. They didn't really pull that light apart and like show all the pieces of it. They used their digital renderings to really break down their product for their buyers to see what's on the inside. So those work together well, the digital renderings and infographics. Uh, AI-generated images work really well as, all, as well. I mean, you've got uh, Max Sinclair's in here. He's going to be on our panel later. Uh, I used his tool, ecomtent.ai, I think, to generate this. That is, you know, the, uh, the massage gun inside of a workout center. And then my favorite one, the rubber ducky on top of a leg. If I were selling rubber duckies, this picture would sell them all day long. Uh, but that's the beauty of the AI-generated images. No matter what kind of problems they may have right now, and they all have problems, it's the worst it's ever going to be. They're only going to get better and better and better. And I think that it's going to open up a lot more opportunities for sellers who don't have huge budgets for their photography. Let's face it, it's the lifestyle images that cost the most. You gotta plan it, you gotta get people wanting to get out there and take photos with your products. You, they're expensive, you can spend thousands and thousands of dollars. Once AI gets there and you don't need to actually have real people, then it's gonna be a game changer for creating tons of lifestyle photos, which are a pain to create right now. So after your product, your platform, your photos on the page, the next thing is to simply you know, write good keyword optimized copy, which may sound hard to do, but gosh, we're living in a day right now where it's, it can be super simple. I do this all the time. I just go in the chat GTP, or I use Jasper. I have an account there too. And I get so many ideas, like just tell me the five audiences that want to buy my products. Then tell me the five ways they want to like search for my product based on each one of those audiences. Uh, one of our speakers, Ritu, taught me that. Go out there and like ask ChatGP, just go down the row, like here's your five audiences. Campers, security people, preppers, so forth. And then tell me the search terms they want to use on there. Then it gave me a list of search terms for each one of the categories. And then I built it into my listing. I actually had it help me write the listing. You can have a beautiful listing now, even if you're not a good copywriter. It's, it's a game changer. Uh, also, uh, I saw this from our panel yesterday, let Walmart tell you how to optimize your listing. When I was up here with Destiny, Norm, Mikhail, and Tim, and they mentioned about the ability to have Walmart tell you to optimize it, I remembered that like, oh yeah, that was pretty cool. I remember like looking at that a year ago, and then I freaked out. I'm like, have I done that? Like, <laughs> is my product optimized? And the one I have, thank God, again, from this morning, uh, the one product that we are selling really well on Walmart is at 97%, so it's doing pretty good, so I must have did something right. But our other products, the ones that are not really taken off yet on Walmart, they got like 40 or 50%. I have an immediate opportunity to go increase my optimization on all the other products we're selling on Walmart as well. So I know what I'll be doing this weekend. <sighs> all right, so after this is on Shopify, you want to create a landing page and a product page for your Shopify products. And if you aren't selling on there yet, you may be a little confused. This is the one thing that catches people up. Uh, a product page and a landing page are completely different on Shopify. So often, on the left, you see this is a product page. That's actually one of the products out there. And um, people think that, like, God, I send all this traffic to our product page. It's just not converting, just not converting. Well, they don't typically convert that well for most businesses. Some do, most do not. The way to really get sales converting for you is to create a landing page that is completely optimized for the audience that you're sending that traffic to. So if you, I know that people are really into like security and self-defense and want to protect their family, I'm going to create a landing page, talks nothing about that, or nothing but about that, and then create ads, sending them to that as well. Having that landing page is the best way to get sales for your product on Shopify. Next is going to be launch then. It's like how do you go out there and actually do what I'm talking about. And I'm going to share something else that's going to be a little bit controversial. So be prepared for having people yell at me and you if you follow this strategy. Take a look at the search I did at 1 in the morning last night for a Life Boost coffee. I did an organic coffee search. And when I looked at it, I saw that 14 out of 20 of the search results are paid ads. That did not used to be the case when we started out 10 years ago. They didn't have paid ads 10 years ago. It wasn't this way two years ago. But more and more, it's a pay-to-play game. It's not that you can't do well 
uh, you, you can do well, but you need to know and understand that you are going to have to advertise in order to get the positions of ranking that you want, or it's gonna be really, really hard to get the positions that you want because there's so few up there. There's more sellers and few organic searches or, or ranking positions on the first page right now. So what I'm gonna tell you is forget about Amazon ranking. Like I know that even I talk about it, lots of people talk about it, but take that stress off you. Don't worry just about ranking on Amazon. Uh, and then you will have people yelling at you like this. But when you think about it, maybe it's not forget about it, maybe it's more don't focus blindly on ranking. Um, keep it in the back of your mind, but don't just go in there and say, like, I'm gonna run ads and give away discounts and coupons until I'm on position one of the most competitive search term for my product. If you do that, and unless you have a lot of money, it's gonna be a very difficult, painful process, and you'll think this business doesn't work. Here's an example for one of our Academy members right here. I'm not gonna share her name, it's Jen. But um, this is uh, for the, these, these like, pickleball paddles, and uh, she's selling these and doing okay. You know, like, kind of got some sales going there. But one of the things we realized when we were talking about their product is that the ad cost for these can be up to $14 for one click. One single click, $14. And if we looked at the prices on here, I don't know circle on here, but they're somewhere between $39 to $60. If you get like three or four clicks, you've already spent the entire cost of the product. Not to uh, even account for what the product costs, what the fulfillment fees. So focusing on that, like, it's, it's not really an option to do that. So if you're like, what do you do then? Like, what do you actually do? If, like, if, if I can't advertise like, on the like, search terms that I want to in order to rank for, what the heck did I do? And this is a different mindset change. Plan on every single sale coming from PPC and accountant optimize for that. It won't be the way, it be that way. It's never gonna be the case where you have to advertise and get every single sale, but if you count for that and put that in your mind, then you will be profitable as the sales come in and you will start getting organic sales. It'll just happen naturally, but do not focus solely on trying to rank on page one for some of the most competitive keywords out there. The exception is, there is an exception, and that's that if you have the funds, you have a clear path to getting to where you want to be, you can do this. Life Boost Costing is doing it. Like, they know their lifetime value. Uh, they have a big advertising spend. They know exactly, what they get one customer, what they're going to spend through their entire life. So they have a much bigger advertising spend. They know where they want to be, and they know that being in that position is worth spending the money on there. And they have a clear path. They know what it's going to take to get there. But very few people are in that situation. So don't focus solely on trying to get to page one, position one, for some of the keywords that you want. Focus on being profitable, PPC. It'll take a little bit, but you will get some sales here and there. And as the sales come in, just a snowball effect. It'll start moving up slowly, which is okay. That's how business works usually. That's how it's supposed to work. So here's the plan then. You wanna go ahead and find a product, to kinda of like recap some things here. Find a product that's different, has high demand, is profitable, and opens you up to sell more products. Subscription, multiple quantities, different products in your catalog as well. Then you wanna go ahead and get high quality images. The second biggest investment in your product should be your photographs. You can get more later on, just can really, really great photos going out. Then use AI to write good keyword copy. Um, it doesn't really, you know, you don't have to be a great copywriter to do this anymore. You don't have to hire anyone, you can do this yourself. Then you wanna also do what I call the three platform hustle on Shopify. You got the product, let's move to each of the platforms. On Shopify, go ahead and launch that product. Follow Matt's training, go re-watch it. We're gonna get the slides uh, when the, uh, the recordings come out, get those as well. And you can see exactly how you can build up your sales on Shopify using a great landing page and then testing out different angles. It's pretty much, you know, five angles, five landing pages. They're kind of the same. The headlines are different. You don't have to put much time to changing the different pages, just the headline. And then five ads, addressing each one of those angles, sending them to each one of those pages addressing that. Just keep running it until you figure out what's gonna work. That's gonna be your primary focus. Anyone starting out, that's what I recommend. Focus on that right there. Then here's the pricing tip. This is kinda of like, I'll talk about pricing a little bit here. This kinda of makes it all work. Your landing page, we talked about already, should be an awesome deal. But your product page can be higher priced. Let me show you again what this looks. For this product page over here, selling it for $99. We don't sell many of those that way, but some people do come in and buy it. Uh, but on the landing page, when you scroll down, we got some awesome deals down there. You can buy it for half price, if they buy one, not even buying multiple quantities, a bigger discount for three, a bigger discount for five. You want your landing page to be an awesome deal because having a higher product, product page, not your landing page, it's actually gonna make your Amazon sales go up. 
Because if someone goes to the Amazon and they see this like really good discounted price and then they do a search for your product on the internet, they're gonna pull up your product. The product is what's gonna get indexed, showing not this landing page you're creating just to send traffic to. They're gonna see that higher $99 price and it's gonna make your Amazon listing and Walmart look much more competitive. I always keep my product pages higher price than what I really sell them for in my landing pages. Now, on Amazon, same thing. You want to go ahead and launch your product at break-even pricing using what I taught you the other day on the conversion bomb. Uh, it'll take a little bit to strike through pricing through there, but once you set your Amazon listing up, launch it at break-even. If we could tell you, like, anyone launching right now, like, one of the best strategies we're seeing when we're launching products, don't try to get a huge bit of profit. That's not your goal. Your goal is to get some traction going there. Launch at a break-even pricing. Sign up, get 30 free Vine reviews. I think there's a cost for them, but sometimes they have promotions where they're free. If you get brand registry, you can get 30 awesome reviews on your product. Uh, and then set up your PPC ads, again, to focus on getting profitable or reasonably priced searches, not trying to rank. And then also include a brand-focused campaign. The reason for that is as you drive traffic to your Shopify page that you're focusing on, people are going to start looking for your product on Amazon. And the way they're going to do it, they're not going to search for Campaign Lantern, Massage Gun, Tactical Flashlight. They're going to put in your brand name when they go somewhere else. So by having a brand campaign set up on Amazon and on Walmart, like I'll talk about here, you're going to get some really cheap, high converting clicks over there. So on Walmart, here's what you do then. You want to launch your product again using the same pricing as Amazon. I want to keep those the same. I want to set up some basic Walmart ads focusing again on reasonable cost and profitability. Uh, I do one auto campaign, one for the main keywords. Don't go crazy. Like Walmart again will tell you that they suggest. Look through, just pick the ones that make sense. And then also do that one brand campaign because you won't get a lot of sales yet. But as you move into growing and getting more advertising traffic towards your Shopify products, people will start looking over there and then you will get more sales that are really affordable. And what makes this work is the pricing. So I'm kind of walk through here. Here's what, here's what we do. Your product page on the, the landing page on Shopify is your offer price. Think about that lower price you put inside of Amazon. You want this to be the lowest, best price you're selling. When you start out, make it low. The product page will be high. On Amazon, again, low price. On Walmart, a low price as well. If you do this, this is what makes it possible to launch on all three platforms, or to grow on all three platforms. Having the pricing work just like this, having that product page on Shopify is a, a game changer, because it'll allow you to get those sales that look like awesome deals on the other platforms. Now, what you want to do is like, I just do this, like, you know, twice a week, you can go in and optimize your Amazon and Walmart ads. I do it every day, <laughs> but you, you don't gotta do it all the time. Uh, and then people are gonna tell you again that you don't want to focus all your time on ranking. Just, they're, they're gonna tell you to do it. I just focus on profitability. That's my, how it works for me. I think it'll work for you guys and kind of remove that stress. Uh, focus the majority of the time testing out different angles on Shopify. Again, spend some time on Amazon, but focus on Shopify. That's where the biggest potential is. If it doesn't work out, we got backups, we got backup plans. Uh, and then that, some of that traffic that you send over to your Shopify page will go to Walmart. You get really low cost profitable sales. Then with your initial low price on Shopify, it's gonna be easier to see which angles are working. And as you find the ones that are working, narrow them down and start increasing your price. Let's start getting some profitability then. Once you see which angles are working, that's when you start increasing that price. As you increase the price on Shopify, follow suit. Start increasing it on Amazon and Walmart, raising each one of them a little bit at a time to start getting more profit in your business. This isn't gonna be a rocket to the top. It's gonna be a slow tortoise crawl, but a much more less risk one and much more profitable one for you. Uh, here's a little tip, tip I said. Also, keeping that Shopify product page at a high price will help you get the strike through pricing that I talked about yesterday. I talked to a few people the other day about it's not working for them. One of the things that Amazon looks for is they look at the prevailing price across all marketplaces. So if you have your product on Shopify at a higher price, it's going to give you another weight factor to help you get strike through pricing. That's why we keep it high as well. Then, as you continue to drive sales on all three platforms, you can start optimizing whichever platform works best for you. Don't have it in your mind right now that I'm only gonna sell on Amazon, I'm only gonna sell on Shopify, or I'm gonna like try to be the biggest Walmart seller in the world. Launch on all three using this strategy. It's very low risk, it's very easy to implement. It's a little slower, but as you move up, you'll find out which platform's working better for you. Jeremy thought that Shopify was gonna be the one. His sales on Amazon are slowly taking off and they're much more profitable. He's gonna focus on that. He wouldn't have known that had he not went onto all the platforms. Now, the time I spend, Matt kind of already talked about this, but I spend pretty much 30 minutes a day. Uh, I have a crazy schedule. I get up. This is my uh, Google Nest doorbell. I get uh, up at around 5 in the morning. I take Penny. If you see right there, that blur, let's see if I can see you there. That's Penny, my dog. 
at 5.20 in the morning, her and I going outside, she's got to do her business. We announce to the neighborhood, you can all get up now. I say that out loud. Um, she enjoys that, shakes her coolie. Coolie is the Italian word for butt, by the way. My wife taught me that. Uh, and so I get up early, and then I just work on my business first thing for 30 minutes a day. That works for me, and that's how I'm able to do everything I just showed you to do the three-platform hustle. That makes sense, you guys? Sound good? You think you can do that? All right, all right. Now let's get to the secret of being a successful solopreneur. Get out your notebook. This one you're probably going to take notes on. Here is the secret. Don't be a solopreneur. It sucks. <laughs> you know, I mean, I, I look back and I tried thinking about like, God, there's been really stressful times in, in, in my life. Everyone's faced them when you're doing this. But all along the way, I've always had people helping me. And if I look back and all these people up here, there's Ezra Firestone, there's, you know, uh, there's Anne who's here as well, Anna, Gracie, so many people, Day and Justice is in there, you can see a little over there, Matt and me and Rich are up there with like kind of like all the, the mud on us and everything. I've had people helping me all along the way and I didn't even realize it. I've never been a solopreneur. Maybe for a brief, you know, I don't know, couple months, but still my brothers helped me then. And so it's all the people that I surround myself with that take me from this and help me get to that. And I've met a lot of people here this week, talked to several people who feel stuck. I'm not gonna call you out by name, Eric, or some other people as well, but I, I had a conversation last night for 20 minutes, uh, letting a pizza get cold because I wanted to help someone. I think she's here right here, but she felt alone. I don't want anyone to feel alone. You're in the right room. If you just wanna go and make a few contacts here so you're never alone again, do that. It will change your life. 